Hello dear viewers, in this video I want to tell you about diesel motorcycles. Make some tea, grab some cookies, and enjoy watching. Diesel motorcycles are a huge rarity these days. First, let's figure out why they didn't become widespread. Definitely diesel power units have their own advantages over gasoline ices. These include relative simplicity, less sensitivity to fuel quality, and lower consumption. But these characteristics are more suitable for large diesel units, like ship engines, locomotives, trucks, generators, and the like. If we decide to reduce the size of a diesel engine, we will inevitably face problems that completely negate its advantages. First of all, if a gasoline engine operates at a compression ratio of about 10 to 1, give or take, a diesel engine operates within the range of 18 to 22. This sharply increases the requirements for the strength of the materials, which must withstand the compression ratio and the forces of detonation. That's why diesel engines are larger and heavier for heavy machinery. A motorcycle by definition is a lightweight vehicle. And achieving the necessary strength of a diesel engine while maintaining its power and size is quite difficult. Secondly, the torque of a diesel engine is several times higher than that of a comparable gasoline engine which imposes certain strength requirements on the transmission. These facts indicate that it is much simpler and more cost-effective to build motorcycles based on gasoline power units, which is basically what we observe. But this does not mean that diesel motorcycles do not exist. Now I will tell you about some of them. The first documented case of using a diesel engine on a two-wheeled vehicle dates back to 1904. The Dutchman Jan Dopper installed a diesel engine from the bronze company on a bicycle that was given to him in the same year. That engine produced two horsepower at 70 revolutions per minute. Later, Dopper upgraded his design with a new frame, and in 1910 he presented the first diesel tricycle. Sometime later, in post-war Britain, the Norton Company began trying to produce motorcycles running on diesel fuel. One of the first was a machine by Tony Sidney with an aluminum 500cc single cylinder engine with a cast iron head which he installed on a Norton. Aluminum made it possible to reduce the overall weight and the engine itself produced between 10 and 14 horsepower at 4,000 revolutions per minute. The maximum speed reached 89 kilometers per hour and the motorcycle itself demonstrated impressive capabilities when climbing uphill. But its main drawback was the acceleration, which was too slow and weak. Another motorcycle like this was assembled by Freeman Sanders, whose Norton developed 18.8 .8 horsepower at 4,500 revolutions per minute, and the maximum speed reached 113 kilometers per hour. Fuel consumption was 2 liters per 100 kilometers. Interestingly, Sanders made only minor modifications changing the design of the gasoline 490 cubic centimeter single-cylinder engine in such a way that it could run on diesel fuel with a compression ratio of 12. But despite the successes, the prototype remained at the project stage. The first company to start selling diesel motorcycles was Royal Enfield. To this day, their most famous diesel project is the Taurus. This is a modified version of the well-known bullet model, a modification that was handled by the company Siraj Automobiles. The model was produced with Greaves Lombardini engines. With a displacement of 325 and 436 cubic centimeters, which was installed in stock Royal Enfield motorcycles. The Taurus motorcycles were sold through the Royal Enfield dealer network and they were in demand among agricultural enterprises and government organizations in India. Here's another beauty from GDR. The EMCE Robin DE ER 400S motorcycle was equipped with a single cylinder diesel engine with a displacement of 412 cubic centimeters and a variable transmission. With a maximum power of nine and a half horsepower, the motorcycle could reach a speed of 94 kilometers per hour. Only 10 of these units were made, and information about them is extremely scarce. Nowadays, diesel motorcycles are produced by Hayes Diversified Technologies, specifically for the military. 
The most popular model is the HDT M1 1030. M1 created on the basis of the Kawasaki KLR650. But instead of a gasoline engine, it has a diesel engine with a displacement of 584 cubic centimeters, which allows it to reach a speed of 90 miles per hour. Fuel consumption is two and a half liters per hundred kilometers. This motorcycle is supplied to the American Marine Corps, the British military, and to NATO. It also has a civilian version, but it is currently unavailable for purchase. There is also an older model. The HDTM 1030M2LI670 comes with a single cylinder, four stroke engine with a displacement of 670 cubic centimeters, producing 33 horsepower, which is enough to accelerate it up to 94.5 miles per hour. In addition, the motorcycle is protected from dust and dirt, and it can also cross puddles and fords up to two feet deep. With a fully filled fuel tank, the HDT 670 can travel 405 miles at a speed of 55.93 miles per hour without refueling. This vehicle can run on all types of military fuel, diesel, biodiesel, aviation kerosene, and similar fuels. And here is the Dutch vision of a diesel bike from the company AVA Products. The unique all-wheel drive track T800 CDI, which appeared in 2009. The motorcycle is equipped with a three-cylinder turbo diesel engine, which has a power output of only 45 horsepower. But its torque is impressive, 100 newton meters. The dry weight of the machine is 225 kilograms, and it consumes only two and a half to three liters of heavy fuel. The full drive on the T800 CDI track is hydraulic, using hoses and a rotor, 15% of the power is transmitted to the front wheel. However, this percentage changes smoothly depending on acceleration and throttle activity. The maximum speed of this machine is around 190 kilometers per hour. This technological marvel costs around 17 and a half thousand euros. In seventh place is a real diesel sports bike, again, from the Netherlands, from the company Star Twin. The Thunderstar 1200 turbocharged direct injection sport bike, which was introduced to the public in 2005. The motorcycle is equipped with a three-cylinder diesel engine with a displacement of 1,200 cubic centimeters and a turbocharger. Taking the three-cylinder diesel engine from the Volkswagen Lupo as a base, the engineers used 3D modeling technology to redesign the engine to suit their needs. The transmission of FJ1200 is a five-speed gearbox of their own design. At low revolutions per minute, the power is 80 horsepower, and the torque is 232 newton meters. When the revolutions per minute rises to 5,500, the power increases to 120 horsepower, while the torque drops to 169 newton meters. The motorcycle weighs 238 kilograms. It is known that the Bolide even managed to participate in races, particularly in Germany. And here is a real mastodon among diesels, the German Nender. Nender is equipped with a two-cylinder, 1.4-liter diesel turbo unit with a power of 112 horsepower and a maximum torque of 200 newton meters. This allows it to reach a top speed of up to 220 kilometers per hour and accelerate to 100 in just four seconds. At the same time, the average fuel consumption is four and a half liters per hundred kilometers. And finally, the retro model diesel 462, which is produced by the German company Zommer Motorrad Technik. This motorcycle is equipped with a single cylinder, four stroke, 462 cubic centimeter engine with a power output of 11 horsepower. The motorcycle weighing 180 kilograms accelerates to a maximum speed of 99 kilometers per hour. It consumes an average of two and a half liters of diesel per hundred kilometers. The price of the basic version is 7,300 euros. Actually, there are a lot more prototypes than I listed. You might ask, but where are Dnieper, Ural, or IZH with a diesel engine? 
Enthusiasts and customizers have long since learned how to install similar engines into the frames of domestic motorcycles. The internet is simply overflowing with articles and videos on this topic. If you're interested in the future, I'll definitely talk about some domestic uh, homemade projects in a separate video. And that's all. This was Crass Moto Channel with you. Thank you for watching. It's important for me to feel your interest. It helps to work and create. By the way, about creativity, my custom build is being finished. You can check out the work process on the channel and by the link in the description. See you next time.